Thank you very much for the invitation. This is my first time in uh, Dallas that I really enjoy. Uh, I would like to mention that I have nothing to disclose as I have no financial relationship with business or industry. And during this presentation, I would like to discuss with you the possibility of using autologous mesenchymal stem cells for treatment of inflammatory demyelinating disorders such as transfer malitis. So before I go to uh, and discuss the potential, potential role of mesenchymal stem cells in repair of myelin, I would like to briefly go over the definition, epidemiology, and uh, clinical presentation, and the pathophysiology, which will, will lead us to an actually potential role mesenchymal cell may play in the repair of uh, this uh, disorder. So transfer malitis is a demyelinating disorder affecting the spinal cord. Spinal cord uh, pathology uh, basically shows the inf inflammatory process that causes the myelination of the spinal cord tracts, which uh, covers almost the entire cross-section of the cord, including the great and white uh, matters. This disease occurs, uh, as you know, in adults and children, and the lar largest number uh, of cases uh, is in young adults in age between 15 and 40. And there is about 14, maybe even 1,500 uh, uh, cases uh, diagnosed in the US every year. And according to the statistics, this is about 35,000, the number may be a little shifted, of people in the US that actually live with the residual uh, disability because of transfer malitis. In general, the genetic as well as environmental factors contribute to uh, damage and then uh, neurological uh, disease. However, in case of transfer malitis, uh, there have been no genetic factors that were, uh, uh, there are no geti genetic factors that have been identified so far. And uh, actually, envi environmental factors would cause inflammation and then activation of the apoptotic pathway, which mainly affects the uh, oligodendrocytes, which are the myelin-producing cells in the CNS, and then uh, neurologic uh, damage due to demyelination. Inflammatory damage uh, in case of transfer myelitis can be caused by either infections, by which I mean the external uh, pathogens, either viruses or bacteria, or by the uh, activity of the immune system, often associated with underlying diseases such as uh, multiple sclerosis. However, no single uh, pathogen uh, or any specific disease or vaccine has been identified so far as a leading uh, risk factors for transfer malitis. Clinical presentation depends on the level of the lesion in the spinal cord and mainly uh, includes the signs of, of the uh, upper moral neuron dysfunction with symptoms of weakness in the legs, like dragging the feet, along with the sharp and uh, shooting pain, sensory alteration, and uh, bowel and bladder uh, dysfunction. If symptoms of the transfer myelitis develop, uh, develop quickly, hours to days, then is if, uh, referred to uh, acute, if two to six weeks is considered uh, subacute, uh, sub and then greater than six weeks is considered chronic. And as I mentioned before, there is a number of uh, people in the United States that live with the uh, residual disability because of transfer malitis, which range from complete paraplegia to mild spasticity, which develops in the chronic stage of the disease. So the most important cause of this disability is damage to the myelin in the segment of the spinal cord. And then the eventual pathology could be axonal damage or neuronal uh, degeneration. And pathophysiolog uh, the pathophysiological changes in the spinal cord include infl inflammation, gliosis, demyelination, and axonal damage. And this is just a, uh, one of the pathological slides that shows the myelination and then activation of glial cells uh, causing gliosis 
as well as infiltration uh, of the white blood cells as a result of inflammation. And this is just a graphical representation of axonal degeneration in which uh, myelin is damaged. And then the nodules of Ranvier are disrupted by red redistribution of the ion uh, channels, which eventually lead to axonal uh, degeneration. Because the pathophysiology involves the inflammatory process and then subsequent myelin damage, treatments, the acute treatments uh, have been focused on the modulating of the immune system, mo uh, mostly using the uh, steroids. However, the current treatments uh, of the acute treatments reduce the uh, symptoms of this disease, but only with the, very li with the limited success for the reduction of long-term uh, disability. And then again, the most important cause of the long-term disability is damage to the uh, myelin. There is some spontaneous remyelination. However, the spontaneous remyelination is not uh, sufficient for a functional uh, repair. There have been a number of uh, strategies, strategies that have been tried in order to uh, boost the uh, remyelination. That would include the use of the growth factors uh, and other, uh, other strategies. However, all these efforts have only limited success. So the hope is that a novel, a novel treatment could be a cell therapy. And we believe that uh, autologous mesenchymal stem cells can actually be an attractive candidates to develop a cell-based therapy for transfer malitis. Why mesenchymal stem cells? Mesenchymal stem cells are easy to obtain without harm to the patient. They can be used for autologous transplantation. They can be delivered by systemic transplantation because they can hold home to the site of CNS injury. They can migrate. They can find the injury and migrate to the site of CNS injury. And then they can secrete factors that can heal tissue and they have also stem cell characteristics. So the last two points, which is the secretion of the uh, factors that heal tissue as well as the stem cell characteristics, are probably one of the most important ca dual characteristics of the marrow stromal cells as the stem cells that are important for therapeutic application, specifically for diseases like transfer uh, malitis or other uh, immune-mediated uh, demyelinating diseases. Mesenchymal stem cells reside in the bone marrow. They can be relatively easily obtained from the aspirates of the bone marrow. About 20 cc of the bone marrow aspirate would yield about 500,000 uh, cells. That can be, these cells can be taken in culture and then they can be made to proliferate in a special media in order to uh, obtain the desired number of cells for uh, transplantation. Another advantage of these cells is that they have a long history of uh, clinical use. The routine human-to-human -human bone marrow transfusion is known since World War I, and then bone marrow transplantation for hematopo uh, hematological uh, malignancies are also long known, and then uh, bone marrow has been also transplanted for other non-cancer uh, conditions. And this is important if we are uh, to use the cells eventually for transplantation in human, as this speaks for the safety of uh, these cells. I also mentioned that the cells have an ability to uh, migrate to the site of injury, which means that they can be systemically in, uh, used they can be infused through the, uh, in the blood vessels, and then they migrate to the site of injury, which is another advantage of using the cells 
eventually in human. And this slide shows it's an example of our own work in which we infused the mesenchymal stem cells in the model of MI. And then after about four weeks, uh, the cells, uh, we noticed that the anatomical as well as perfused number of blood vessel was, system, was, uh, was statistically higher than in, the con in controls. It means that these cells that were infused in the blood vessels traveled to the site of injury uh, in the heart and then regenerated the blood vessels that were lost to uh, MI. Bone marrow cells secrete factors that can enhance neuroprotection of the endogenous damaged tissue, and that would include the protection of neurons as well as oligodendrocytes from the cell death, which is another characteristic that would be important for treatment of uh, demilinating diseases. And then neovascularization of injured tissue, and I just showed you that, for example, in the model of MI, they are, uh, they are able to regenerate the blood vessels, and they can also recruit the endogenous stem cells to the site of transplantation. So in other words, transplanted mesenchymal stem cells secrete factors that can attract endogenous stem cells to the site of injury, and these endogenous stem cells can enhance uh, regeneration of the uh, injury in different forms of uh, animal models. And uh, the last but not least important is their immunomodulatory activity, meaning that they can uh, they can uh, modulate the activity of the immune system, which is another characteristics of the cells, which would add for the treatment of uh, immune-mediated uh, uh, diseases. I also mentioned that these cells have stem cell characteristics. By stem cell characteristics, I mean that they are multipotent. These cells are isolated from the bone marrow, and they represent a non-hematopoietic component of the bone marrow. They are known as marrowstromal cells or mesenchymal stem cells, and then, then can be isolated and then expanded in culture. And what you can see in here are actually the cultures of five or seven days after isolation, which they grow in the form of clusters that you have these underlying cells and then the smaller cells grown on the top of the uh, bigger, uh, more mature cells. These cells are undifferentiated and they have the ability to differentiate into mesenchymal tissue, which is bone and fat, and this is long known. And they have also ability to uh, cross the mesenchymal barrier and differentiate into other cell types, including liver, endothelial cells, as well as brain. And what I'm showing you in here is, uh, our, uh, is our recent work, which shows that these cells can actually make the oligodendrocytes pro progenitor cells, which again would be an important characteristic of the cells if we are uh, to use the cells for the treatment of demilinating diseases. So what I have showed you so far is the advantage of the cells for eventual therapy, which would be, again, the easy way to obtain the cells because the method is minimally invasive. They're used for autologous transplantation which leaves us without the worry of rejection or immune reaction. And then they can be delivered systemically through the blood vessels as they have the ability to home and travel to the site of injury. And finally, they have the characteristics of stem cells as well as the ability to secrete factors that are beneficial to the different type of uh, injuries. So just to prove my assertion that the stem, these cells have stem cell characteristics, again, that few slides from our uh, work, that shows that 
they express transcription factors and genes that are the same as uh, are expressed in multipotent embryonic stem cells. That would include the OCT4 and REX1, which are two trans uh, transcription factors and markers of multipotent uh, cells. The other markers are stem cell embryonic antigen 1, 3, and 4, as well as TRA 160 and 181. All of each are very important for the multipotent characteristics of, the, uh, of stem cells. As a part of their stemness and stem cell uh, stem uh, characteristics, they respond to external environment in vitro. These cells, when expanded and then induced to differentiate, can differentiate into endoderm, mesoderm, and ectoderm. As an example, I have a slide which shows that exposure of the cells to the neural environment, which in this case is a serum-free serum media, with the addition of growth factors such as EGF and FGF, which is a media known to, for, known to expand uh, neural stem cells. These cells assume neural-like morphology and proliferate and then eventually form neural-like spheres. However, when these cells man are maintained in 20% media with the addition of serum, which is a typical condition for mesenchymal cells, then remain mesenchymal. Again, if the cells are cultured in neural media for uh, about a week or longer, then they detach from their normal uh, monolayer cultures, and then they grow in a form of spheres that resemble neurospheres. And the, they express markers of neural stem cells, such as Musashi, NCAM, or Nestin. If we induce them to differentiate, to then can differentiate into mature phenotypes, and this is an example of and astrocyte differentiation from mesenchymal stem cells in which they express the markers of astrocytes and assume the morphology of astrocytes. The cells can also differentiate into other cell types. As an example, I have here differentiation into cardiomyocytes and then endothelial cells, expression of CD31, and other endothelial markers, as well as differentiation into typical meso mesenchymal uh, derivatives, such as, uh, adip uh, such as adipocytes and uh, astrocytes. So what is the ultimate goal of the cell therapy in general? In general, the goal of cell therapy is to change the balance from degeneration towards regeneration. So how transplanted stem cells can go along and do that? They can either replace the lost cells because of the injury or some other disease, such as a stroke or MS, or they can induce the repair via secretion of a factors that would promote the survival of the damaged cells. So mesenchymal stem cells have been transplanted into different uh, diseased CNS model in uh, animals, and they have shown beneficial effects, which was mostly explained by secretion of factors that modulate inflammation, reduce demilination, increase neuroprotection, and finally, enhance functional recovery rather than replacement of the lost cells. And this slide actually summarizes the therapeutic activities of transplanted uh, mesenchymal stem cells that have been uh, 
that have been uh, identified uh, so far. They include uh, immunomodulation, remyelination, as well as neuroprotection, uh, which at the end leads to the functional uh, recovery. So several groups uh, have recently initiated the studies of uh, autologous cultured expanded bone marrow stem cells. And the current trials predominantly focus on the safety of the cells as well as uh, proof of concept. And only future trials will tell us about more about the uh, efficacy of the cells, even that many animal models have shown that the cells are really helpful in a treatment of uh, demyelinating diseases such as uh, multiple sclerosis, for example. So in conclusion, marrow cells are easily obtained in the culture, and we can easily multiply the number of the cells and obtain the number of cells that we really need for trans transplantation. And then these cells also express stem cell characteristics. And uh, in terms of participation of the cells in uh, remyelination, they modulate the inflammation, they suppress the death of oligodendrocytes, which are the myelin-producing cells, and also uh, protect the neurons. And then finally, they are able to enhance the differentiation and then to some degree remyelination by attracting the, uh, the oligodendrocytes from the host and then inducing the differentiation of the oligodendrocytes that are actually uh, present in the host itself. I think I somehow lost my acknowledgement slide, but I would like to. <laughs> I don't know how this happened, but I would like to acknowledge uh, everybody who uh, works with me, and I would like to acknowledge my collaborators, including Dr. Smith, as well as director of our center, Dr. Seltzer, and the chairman of uh, neurology at Temple University, Dr. Azizi, for tremendous help and support. Thank you.